Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars, and we've got one for you today. Anna Jane Casey is a lady I've seen four million times in seven million different productions, and she's here. You must be exhausted. Totally knackered. 42 and knackered. That's me. That's my CV now. Yeah. Do you know what I love about you more than anything? Can I be perfectly honest? Of course you can. Go for it. No bingo wings. Congratulations. Do you know what? It's lifting small children. I have an eight-year-old and a two-year-old, and the two-year-old is made of lead. I swear, she's the heaviest child in the world. And lots of people say, do you work out? No, I just lift my children. Is that what it is? Because, I mean, I think I first saw you in Chicago, and that pose, I don't know how to describe it, but that thing you do is so memorable, and I think you did it truly better than anyone else who ever's done that role. Well, I am eight foot shorter than anybody else who's done that role, so there are usually big, tall ladies. I'm only five foot three, but yeah, I was determined to dance tall, as I was once told. Yes. We're here today at Forbidden Broadway which is on at the Vaudeville and I saw it Monday night and you're so spectacular I was just saying to Christina you couldn't pull this off unless you did it better than everyone else because it would just look crap absolutely I mean it's because literally it's two hours of running around and being goofy <laughs> so unless you've actually got skills it's going to look like a load of old pants so one thing we've really prided ourselves on is that we're going to sound brilliant so you go there's four voices hopefully unless you come and see us on a dodgy day but we're going to sound brilliant and you're going to have a real good time so what pressure is on you? I mean, in a big production, there might be an ensemble of 50 on a, on a big show, a good show. Um, in this, there really is four of you who've got to knock it out of the park. If you wake up in a morning and suddenly <clears throat> it's not quite there, do you panic? I mean, how do you get through your day? You do. There's, there's moments of, oh, my Lord. Cause the, and also the styles of singing in the show are so different. I mean, Christina sings beautiful soprano and then she's chesty belting. I do a lot of low stuff and then shout. You really do use the whole range of it. Um, my poor children, I've not actually read to them in months. I'm like, ah, mommy can't speak. <laughs> Protecting my instrument. But um, it is knackering, but luckily we have fantastic standbys. We have Joe Prowse who covers the boys, Laura Tebbett covers the girls, and they're both phenomenal. So we're in good hands if we're suddenly dying. What is it like being you to be one of probably five leading ladies in the West End who more or less owns every role you do and are widely respected as the best in the business, truly? Oh, that's very, very kind. I kind of, I don't think of myself like that. I ride a little moped into town. I zoom into the show. I literally run out of the theatre at the end to get home for the school run in the morning. I mean, I, you know, people have said that to me before. You're in a little, really niche little band. And I go, am I? Okay, that's really nice. I'm very, very flattered. I mean, Janie D, Joanna Riding, Sally Ann Triplett, those ladies are who I think of my brilliant peers. And hopefully now I'm in that little group. I was going to say, do you accept that you are in that group? Just about, but I have that northern self-deprecating thing of, oh no, I'm just a market trader's daughter. I'm just here doing jazz hands and big smiles. I was looking at your CV earlier and I've seen you in most of these. I mean, you look down the list, Cats, Joseph, Starlight. It's a silly question. They're probably like saying, what's your favorite child? But are there some that stick out more than others? <laughs> I just mouthed who was my favorite child was there. I'm not gonna take. Um, who favorite shows? Do you know what? I was only talking the other day about Starlight Express, which for me, when I didn't do Starlight, I was like, that's just a show where people just roll around on skates. And actually doing it, not only is it the hardest physical thing you'll ever do, but the most satisfying. And you just to see kids' faces completely in awe as we're racing around. That was brilliant. That was joyous. But um, it's got to be West Side Story. I'm a sucker for a good old tune. And I met my husband there. So we now force our children to watch the movie. They'd rather watch Peppa Pig. But we're like, watch this film. This is how mummy and daddy fell in love. So yeah, West Side, I think. And again, when you look at all of these shows, they're all love stories, aren't they? I mean, I look down all of them. You can't have a musical that's a hit without two people falling in love and a third person and a triangle thing at some point in the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is kind of a generic setup for... But it's the same with any play, really. I mean, if you're going to go and see the angstiest of plays, there's always a couple who are canoodling in the back. But musicals, I, I, I've got to say, I don't actually go and see musicals. Oh, no, there's an admission. But I do like enjoying doing them because it is really satisfying and you get to meet some great people. Hang on, we can't just move on from that. So what is it you <laughs> find them boring you don't like yeah. them what is it they're rubbish they're two hours of the most dullest time you'll ever spend no they are they only leave your brain at the door for most musicals and just enjoy like two hours of joy because uh, let's face it life's a bit of a pain in the bum sometimes which i think why musicals are still very popular even the crazy modern new ones you know rent is really arty and fabulous and you're in town which i saw not so long ago did you not like it I oh i hated it i gave it one star out of five i did honestly i couldn't bear it just to, to, to pay 79 quid to what a musical about going to the loo oh i left at the interval i'm not sitting through that rubbish it is a very random setup but you know people are going and they're enjoying it i loved it you see did you really yeah but i my... think you want the west end to fail that's what's secretly going on <laughs> here shows about we and poo let's face it we need to have poo town next i think though. that's what it is i'm a bit of a sort of safe guy in a way and i just the idea of just pee for an hour and a half and then i just thought oh, i'm going i'm gonna go and see les mis where they're all dead at the end you know what i mean <laughs> 
<laughs> where they all die under the arms of the, <laughs> the French. But um, no, I, I really liked it. And, but still, you know, once again, it's a story. It's a love story. Last yeah. night, I mean, I went to see Memphis for the second time. I saw it originally on Broadway. Stunning, spectacular. And for the first time, I think almost ever, better than the original Broadway yeah. production. You can't say that very often, can you? No, not at all. I mean, I saw Hairspray. My husband and I saw Hairspray on Broadway with Harvey Feinstein, and he was phenomenal. We didn't see the show here, but I'm, I'm kind of friends with Michael Ball. So, hello, Michael. And he, would, I'm sure, was brilliant. But you're right. I think for the first time, London is kind of leading the way in musicals. Mm. Go London. And actually, it's funny you say that because Memphis has got a lot of similarities between Hairspray. It's a story about race. It's a story about a TV show. Or you almost wonder if the producers had seen Hairspray before they came up with it. But there you are. Um, I want to talk about that feeling when you do your 11 o'clock numbers because you're queen of that, really. Nobody knocks them out of the park like you do. And even in this show last week, there, there was a scene where that pin focuses on you. It's all about you. Is that terrifying or thrilling? A little bit of both. I mean, when you first do something, you know, I've done the show before. I did the show in 2005 when it was first here at the Chocolate Factory and then again in the summer and now we've moved to the Vaudeville. So I've done this show a few times, but it still is absolutely like poop in your pants moments when you're stood there. Don't bring urine town into this again. We're back again with toilet humour. There is, there's real moments of terrifying stuff going on and a lot of people at the moment go, oh, we saw you do the proms and you sang Don't Rain on My Parade at the Albert Hall. Let me tell you, if you watch that video carefully, I am absolutely, I'm twitching, I'm terrified. Because not only is it one of the most famous songs in musicals, it's 5,000 people looking at you going, yeah, go on then, dear, you show me. So it is really scary. And I think as you get older, you get more fearful as well. I mean, my kids run around and they jump off the top of a slide and they go, well, and they scream loud and they're not fearful. Now I'm very old and scared. There aren't many people who can do it like you. Maz Murray, I love oh, to see on stage. Yeah. And Sharon D. Clark's another one where you feel absolutely comfortable. No matter how high it goes, you're going to get there. And you're one of them. Um, do you realise how blessed you are and what a gift that is? I've started to recently. I've got to say it. You just look around and I have lots of friends and cousins and relatives who really go, oh, God, I've got to work again. And as much as it's knackering, I mean, Forbidden Broadway is literally running a marathon for two hours while screaming. But there's nothing like it. It's really satisfying and I am very very blessed I do know that yeah and you've got to be pretty organised I mean this show moves so fast the wrong wig in the wrong place or <laughs> the wrong shoes I mean you could end up doing Wicked in the middle of Phantom couldn't you <laughs> <laughs> and it's happened wigs have been on sideways somebody's had a costume on backwards oh yeah it's brilliant in fact there was one time when I think I came on realised I had something wrong on ran off got changed and came back on but with this kind of show you can do that as long as you go on the end people are going to laugh what is left in the West End for you that you would love to do that would be exciting you have have virtually done every major role um, I mean other than being a giraffe in the Lion King what's left well I'm working on that I'm working on my I life love that. I know I'm only 5'3 that I'd be the meerkats that'd yes. be me I'd be like mm, brilliant um, there is a production on Broadway you might have seen it I haven't of Pippin which they did uh, at the Chocolate Factory a smaller version of a couple of years ago now but Pippin on Broadway apparently is smashing it and they're going to bring it over to London hopefully and there's one part in it for an older lady so I'm holding on to that one that'll be my next one hopefully if it comes you're so gifted and talented. I'm going to let you go. It's been such a pleasure seeing you again. Thank you for the memories and every bit of joy that you've given to this West End because you're one of those few people who really have carved the future of it. And when you see someone like you on stage, it's humbling because I always think if I can do the role in a show, it ain't good enough. Do you know what I mean? And I see that all the time. And when you watch you, you just think, I don't know how you do it. Congratulations. Forbidden Broadway is on here at the Vaudeville Theatre. AJ, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Lovely.